Um, thank you. It's so good to see everybody here. We are strong, right? We're invincible. We are women. women. And men. And men. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, <laughs> we, we are ready. And uh, we are here to celebrate uh, the empowerment of women as agents of change. Women opening doors to peace and freedom. The phrase tonight to be repeated is collaboration is dedication to peace and freedom. I joined Wealth Des Moines for two reasons. One of them is Jane Majors. Jane, stand up. The first time I met with uh, the Wealth family as, as, as a soup supper, which is, you know, we're good cooks. And I had to translate for some people who were coming from Africa. I was trying to do it from, you know, English to French. And uh, Jane uh, got me uh, immediately when I walked in the door with her clipboard. <laughs> she is the best membership driver we've ever had. Thank you very much. I also met Lucy and Jean Krauss, and we need to give out a shout out to Lucy and Jean tonight. <laughs> Lucy was one of the uh, founders of Wealth uh, Des Moines about 52, 53 years ago. And they're one of the reasons they're welcoming. And uh, I thought, ah, I found a home. I, and uh, I stood up to be president of Wealth US for one main reason. And that was the pragmatic, social, and ethical philosophy of Jane Adams. Yeah. Wealth's first president. And as noted, the first woman, uh, American woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize, her colleague, Emily Green Bulch, would win it in 1946. We often talk about the group that came over and went over to The Hague in 1915. I don't know how many of you remember the picture of the women on the boat with their long coats and all their hats. I don't know how they did that. The big peace sign. And they did it without email or hashtag. <laughs> 3,000 women in just a few short months to bring a moderate and mediation to the war that they were trying to stop. But for me, wealth became uh, wealth earlier. It came about 121 years ago when the doors of Hull House opened in 1889. Now how many know where Hull House is? Where is it? Chicago. Chicago. Great. Chicago. That settlement house was the first in America. And it was run by uh, Jane Addams and Ellen uh, Gates Starr, not as a charity. I say that over, not as a charity, but a home for immigrants. It was there for the promotion of social justice issues forming the basis of what would be later called, what we see as, the, the study of sociology. Nearly a decade after the opening of the doors, uh, Jane Addams came to Grinnell College to give a lecture entitled, Democracy and Social Ethics. I'm going to say that again. Democracy and social ethics. Yes. 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 Adams was uh, uh, on the founding boards of NAACP and ACLU. She, along with the black uh, goth social gospel movement uh, members, made the NAACP respond quickly to the lynchings in Springfield, Illinois in 1909. The ACLU and uh, what was now, what would be later called Will, were looking at uh, child labor laws, of course, and Jane tried to mediate the Pullman strike. Anybody know about the Pullman strike in Chicago? She wasn't very successful, but she tried. 
So there, here we are, our legacy of some really dangerous women, you know? <laughs> they were called communist, uh, socialist, you know? They were uh, vilified. There were suffragists. Uh, the first uh, women trade union league was held, a meeting was held in Hull House. The women's uh, Christian temperance. <laughs> Uh, strong women, strong women. <laughs> the, the Nationalist Socialist Women's Committee was formed there. Now, I have to admit, Jane's uh, socialism was Tolstoy and Gandhi. So, you know, it was a pretty uh, pure and vital energy there. And of course, the Quakers and other uh, religious leaders were joining in and taking care of of the immigrants and of the Chicago area in, in itself and to be a model for the rest of uh, the United States and the world actually. This is our heritage. It's not a museum. It's that we finally let Jane out of the closet as well. <laughs> so they began the Women's Peace Party which became WILF and one of the major platforms in 1910 for the Women's Peace Party was this. We demand that women be given a share in deciding between war and peace in all the courts of high debate. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> we were, as our mission states, to build and strengthen relationships and movements for justice peace, and radical democracy. <laughs> she hastened us in 1919 at Zurich in the International Congress of Women at the end to have the moral energy to create a new sort of force in this world. It is a vital thing, the only thing, that will change death and destruction that meets us now. It is to create a new sort of force with our moral energy. And that's what we're doing tonight. Are we not doing that tonight? We are doing that tonight. The driving force of my presidency was to bring forth the egregious life-threatening greed and duplicity of the Agra industrial complex. As many of you know, I'm an Iowa farm girl. And I can tell you, there are no other women presidents of wealth that can have quite the background that I have. And also, my family was touched deeply, as many of you might know. My dad died at 54 of lymphoma. My sister died at 60 of breast cancer. My, uh, my brother suffers from 24 years of Parkinson's disease. We had, we had thyroid diseases, both my sister and myself. Now I'm telling you, there are studies and studies and more studies that this is a time bomb. This is what's happening to our generation and to our children and to our grandchildren, and I have 11 of them. So it's very personal to me. I took it to The Hague in 1915, uh, 1915, you bet. <laughs> I was there, in spirit. <laughs> you got to admit that. Okay. In 2015, we celebrated our 100th year at, at The Hague. And I was on a panel, I got together a panel on food security and bringing for the first time a panel about what the demands are around the globe for the reconstruction of our agriculture, our corporations, and the death that belong to their conscience, if they have any. But if I followed that up with several panels once, and we are, uh, we do have a, an office in New York that's connected with the UN. We are allowed to speak at the UN, one of the few peace movements who are allowed to do that. 
So uh, every year they have the Commission on the Status of Women. How many know about that? How many have been there? Yes. Will has the, um, a practicum, uh, one of our initiatives, Wealth US, has an initiative of practicum and local to global. How many of us have been to the local to global for senior women? And we have two more going this year. The practicum is for students to get to know for a whole week, uh, staying in New York and uh, going through the ropes and the runarounds in the UN because we have to be a force there. They are being bought out for, uh, by corporations. So we have to stand up. We had, over the last three years, had three workshops each year on agriculture, rural women, the impact of uh, the insidious impact of the corporate world, particularly here in the US, uh, US and Des Moines with the World Food Prize, which we've protested every year for a week. Just uh, yesterday, on the streets of Brussels, what happened? Anybody know? Children. Children. Students. Students. What did they do? They stood up for the planet. They did. They stood up. They stood up for the planet. Now we have the Green New Deal. Hey, we're ready. We'll ride that way. So we're here tonight. We have a lot of initiatives that I could talk about. But of course, I talked about the one that's closest to my heart. And I hope you all uh, will join with us. And I know you will. Uh, to, to collaborate as we have done and honor all of those here sitting today who've worked so hard to be together on all of the issues for freedom and justice and I think we need to deserve another applause. <laughs> Tonight we carry on the legacy of our four mothers with uh, you uh, women as women speaking truth to power and men, be it in support, uh, in support of labor unions, voting rights, environmental survival, anti-war, nuclear abolition. In nuclear abolition, WELF was one of those organizations that were part of the reception of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2017 by the International Committee on to Nuclear uh, abolish nuclear weapons. <laughs> With collaboration, technological advances, and growing membership, the strength of Wealth US comes from its foundations, our members. Tonight is our night, yours and ours. The echoes of 121 years of wealth women reverberate through our bodies and souls. We form an ecosystem, a feminist ecology defined by the humane regard for all beings and creatures. Here and now, tonight, be assured we stand with you hand in hand, to bring forth a new day, a new story to be told. Thank you so much. Yeah.